Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to unbox this budget SEMA CM517 from Taiwan Gun. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do like and subscribe. It's going to be really helping me out. Especially clicking that like button helps me get seen by the YouTube algorithms and that would really help me out. So today we've got another unboxing, the CM517 from Taiwan Gun. Uh, this was about £50 uh, from them, just under £50 uh, from a last big order, which I'll put a link to down below. Make sure you can check that out. Uh, you can get this in the UK from Patrol Base as well. Priced to around £99, about £100 uh, or there or thereabouts. So we'll do the usual unboxing and then we'll do a bit of footage and, uh, and do the usual summing up at the end. So like with any of the budget ones, we get the standard plain brown box, a little bit of a sticker on the corner and nothing special on there. So we'll get that out of the way. And inside we get the usual cellophane fan. That has been bust uh, just because obviously they've had to downgrade it for us. So we've got our chrono sheet from Taiwan Gun. So they're saying it's sort of 340, 343. Uh, that looks like it says 358 there, uh, right at the end. So what I'm going to do is just because that looks a little bit inconsistent, I'm going to chrono it myself and see what comes out as part of our shooting test. We get our usual target stroke anime safety information. And there she is. Whoa, check that out. Uh, obviously, quick point on safety. If you're going to do this sort of thing, I've made sure I've got eye protection on, the batteries are out, I've made sure there's no ammo out, that kind of stuff. Make sure you're being safe as well. So move that out of the way. Uh, so we get charger, which I won't be using because I'm not in the EU uh, and use EU style um, chargers. That wasn't a statement on Brexit. Uh, plastic high cap, which I have found historically works quite well. My son's got the 506 and his plastic high cap is still working really, really well. You get a little sling. Um, my son's 506 sling, I think, broke in the first game he used it. And you get a battery, which will be charging up as well and seeing what the rate of fire is. That's an 1100 8.4 uh, volt name type and here is the thing we've been waiting for now it's pretty much identical to the 506 the 513 all the other variants obviously all the just changing up is sometimes a little bit about the stock but most of the stocks are the same uh, but usually it's just the front end that's changed up and that's all that's changed here is just this front end so they've gone a little bit different with the style of riz there uh, it's quite actually it's quite nice and easy to hold now the majority of the weight is sitting in the middle that's where the gearbox is so it's quite well weighted when you get it in your shoulder it's not really going anywhere um it's quite uh, easy to keep hold of now in terms of obviously the gun itself getting your hands on there is quite nice and comfortable maybe somebody's covers would help but that's each to their own uh, you've got plenty of real estate there to uh, attach some uh, sort of accessories into so starting at the front there we've got a barrel that you can see runs right into the muzzle brake there that is plastic uh, and not very tight um, possibly just needs a little o-ring behind that just to tighten it up you've then got a metal outer barrel and then we've got the usual plastic front sight plastic rail unit, plastic receiver, plastic pistol grip, plastic stock, plastic stock tube. Um, you know, it is majority plastic. Your trigger is uh, metal. Uh, your bolts are metal. Your sling loop is metal. Um, but by and large, everything else is plastic uh, just because it keeps the cost down, but keeps it like this, the kind of M4 that you literally could run around all day with and really not feel tired from the weight of it. So the stock then has got... looks like four positions and when we pop the battery cover off you've got this old style of stock that we've seen before which is an absolute pain that obviously needs modding the wire comes out it's wired to a, a mini tammy i'm hoping before long they will start wiring these to dean's because i feel that's a better quality connection uh, but i can see why that's quick and easy and cheap uh, obviously the Normal crane stocks have got plenty of room in there to get our crane stock battery in there, the one that was included, or a lipo of our choosing as well. But that plate will definitely need modifying just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves to get in there. And you've got a fuse in line there as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly grab some gloves and I'm going to show you, uh, as requested by my Discord group, a little section on how easy is it to operate this with gloves on. 
as you probably noticed, I've got paint on my hands. That's because I've been painting recently, decorating my house. Uh, so these are uh, new gloves, pretty much for this purpose at the minute, just because I can't find my usual Oakleys uh, and I've gone for XL size gloves. I will put a link down below to these gloves just for the purpose of obviously showing this bit. So in terms of the gun then, it's quite nice and easy and comfortable. The selector is nice and easy to move. The mag release is nice and easy to move. The magazine will go in nice and easily with gloves on, as well, winding the mag, because it's a high cap, approximately 300 round high cap. That will work nicely. Now this is where, oh no, even that, I was gonna say sometimes high caps can be a pain to operate, but that is surprisingly easy to operate, even with my gloves on. Um, even the stock, you know, it's quite easy to uh, get access to the battery compartment with my gloves on to change the batteries. Possibly a little bit fiddly messing with Tamiya's and a little clip on the Tamiya as well. Um, but in general, um, actually quite easy to operate. I assume that's not just because it's an airsoft because I would assume that's more because it's a well thought out uh, weapon platform, even in real steel, obviously for people wearing gloves when they're operating with it and things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed that new little section of operating it with gloves. I hope my Discord gang are happy now. Uh, if you've not joined my Discord, make sure you check uh, my links below and on my uh, socials and stuff. They've all got links through to each other. Uh, it would be lovely to have you join us there. It's a really nice community of people there. So we'll go and get this uh, test fired, do the chrono, do the rate of fire and everything, and then we'll see where that leaves us and do the batteries. Seven point four volt, five one seven rate of fire. Five one seven, eight point four volt rate of fire. My bad for uh, letting go of the trigger part way through the second one. 517, 11.1, here we go. Okay, so we're uh, back from the chrono and um, I was sort of right to check, I suppose, uh, their chronoing sheet. So we were getting out of this a minimum 351 feet per second up to a maximum of 357 feet per second. Now, that's not a major concern right at the second. Yes, it is a little bit spicy. You put some point twos through it and you set the hop, that's gonna be well below 350. And it's brand new as well, which to me, um, I'm pretty sure that's gonna settle to well below. So my advice would be, if you're gonna buy this, um, patrol base I would have thought would have knocked that FPS down a little bit um, to make sure it is fully legal for me uh, if I was going to get one I would always make sure that I put shoot a couple of mags through of, of ammo through it just to settle the spring down a little bit you know good three six three hundred rounds six hundred rounds just helps to start settling it in a little bit and get used to it uh, obviously in terms of uh, the um, rate of fire then so on the 7.4 so the usual 7.4, I'm using one with the Deans on it because the Tammy one, one of the wires actually came off and had to go. Uh, so it's doing about 11.1 rounds per second. Let's call it 11 rounds per second. It's not bad, it's more or less in line with what we've seen before. Um, you know, sort of 11 stroke, 12 rounds per second. We then did the 8.4 volt NIM fully charged and that gave us sort of only marginally better, only like a, a, a fraction of a, a BB a second faster. So like 11 and a half, nearly 12 rounds per second. Um, Again, respectable, you know, it's nothing to be sniffed at uh, and it's definitely competitive when you're going to be playing. Uh, and then 11.1 then gave us the obviously the, the best result, which was 18.6 uh, rounds per second. 
um, which obviously makes it a lot more compa competitive. Whether it's going to long last la last long enough on an 11.1, I'm not convinced. Uh, based on the internals of the gearbox, it will definitely run an 11.1 for a while. It's just a matter of how long will it run an 11.1 before something breaks. Piston strips its tooth, the gear sh shreds, whatever. Um, I have seen people, some, some of my friends have got these and run nothing but 11.1s and they're still going without any issues. And then other people seem to be putting a 7.4 volt LiPo in it, pulling the trigger once and the, popping something inside it and having to have a piston or whatever. So it's almost potluck. Now I'm pretty confident it's gonna have the blue internals. Let's just have a look. I can see down that um, um, hop unit, there is a blue air nozzle. So I would expect that it is obviously one of the newer generation of gearboxes that we've seen with the nozzle on it. Uh, with the blue plastic internals, which I'll be doing next week um, or in the future disassembly video. Uh, so obviously in terms of the batteries, you're going to fit any sort of crane stock battery that's going to go straight in there, drop straight in. Particularly if you modify this, which I strongly suggest you do. And I will uh, try to remember to put the link down below to my uh, stock mod for this particular stock or type of stock just to make that better. You're easily going to get, you know, that's a, a, a 7.4. The 8.4 is obviously meant to go in there, so that goes in easily. The 11.1 now, let's have a look. Let's see if I can get the 11.1 in there. Ooh, do you know what? I actually think. Oh, I was close then, I was pretty close. You actually got a smaller capacity than this 2600 milliamp. 11.1, you could probably get an 11.1 volt lipo in that stock there putting one down the stock tube two down on each side and still probably have enough a little bit of room to connect it up you possibly might need to extend your stock out a little bit which a lot of people do anyway uh, just to get that in there uh, but it's a possibility uh, to get you started but make sure you modify uh, that that plate on the end there so all in all, um, the range obviously we saw is putting out about 45 metres or thereabouts. Um, I did choose to do uh, in the dark with the tracer rounds because my current shooting locations are not uh, the best to see BBs at longer range. So I just thought if we went for in the dark, you can see the tracers through the whole flight path and you can see me going through the process of setting the hop. It is definitely getting out to about 45-ish metres, which... You know, that is not to be sniffed at. It is entirely respectable, completely sort of um, competitive it, on most airsoft sites. CQB, that's never even going to be close to what you need to get to anyway. And even in the woodland, you know, a little bit better field craft uh, and, and you're going to be laughing. So, again, an absolute bargain steal of a, of a gun. You just can't fault them. It's 50 quid. You know, just, just even for the, the sake of buying one to keep as a spare if your main goes down you know this is technically cheaper than buying a pistol and you might as well just keep that in your boot ready for if your main goes down particularly if you're running an m4 anyway get one of these and, and keep it as a spare if you're running an ak get one of the uh, 522s or one of the other sort of ak cheap variants again just chuck it in your boot if you're running an ak your main ak goes down go and switch it up and bring that one out they're a lot of fun for a, a tiny tiny price even at the uh, patrol base price of £100, they're still worth it. They're such a budget. Possibly could argue slightly uh, more stuff. At, could be a bit better for £100 price tag. But obviously with UK VAT and stuff like that, it is something to obviously think about. So I absolutely love these budget guns uh, that seem uh, uh, chucking out. I appreciate Taiwan Gun obviously getting this to me. Uh, this was bought and delivered before Brexit. I have got an order on at the minute uh, after post-Brexit to see what happens uh, and see what imports are coming. So watch out for that video coming soon. So I hope that's helpful. I will leave the usual photos after this and I will see you next time. Bye.